What's going on guys? This is Shane here with Cornerstone Captures and today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about lights. So the story is I was hanging out with my cousin and he's a dope photographer, absolutely amazing photographer and absolutely amazing artist period, right? Like he does graphic designs, he draws, he does photography, like super dope, right? And one thing that he does like really, really well in photography that I envy the most is uh, landscapes, right? I remember when I was really trying to get into photography, he was giving me a lot of tips and a lot of pointers on, you know, things to do with a DSLR because, you know, the DSLR is a step up from your typical point and shoots. Some years later, now he's the one asking me for advice. This is my advice to him and my tips for you guys. Like he, like he said, I know nothing about lighting chain. Help me out here. I, 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 this is what I want to shoot. And let's say what he wants to shoot is products, right? Um, it's kind of products, but it's not products. He knows what it is, but let's just say products, right? And he's just like, man, I want to do this, but I really, really just don't know uh, what to do with lighting. But you do like I, I've seen your work and I've seen where you've gone with this. And, you know, like if there's any tips that you can give me, let me know. So this is that. If you didn't know, there are three types of lights, right? There's natural light, there's flash, and then there's continuous light. And when I say continuous, I mean artificial continuous light. So I'm going to first start off telling you guys my story into artificial lighting, which would be flash. And so like most people, my first artificial light was the pop-up flash on top of my Canon T3i. The battery's dead here and I don't know where my charger is and you know, trust me, it's a flash in here, it pops up. I'm pretty sure you guys are familiar. But, and it's great for what it does, you know, it pops up, lights a subject that you feel might need to be lit, and it does a job. You can kind of tweak the power settings with it a little bit, not too much, but you can't change the direction of it at all. You know, starting out, that's fine. But then you start to learn the limitations of just straight on hard light. You know, you're gonna get a lot of hot spots on your subject. You're not gonna be able to control any type of flashes on the reflections, uh, that type of stuff. And you know, it's not gonna be very flattering. It's not gonna be very soft. It's not too much you can do to modify this light or soften it up. So once I started to step my game up and I really felt like I needed to do some of those things, what I did was I went out and I grabbed this. And this is a Canon 580, uh, our EXRT speed light. I don't even think that they make these anymore. I think they're up to the 600 variant, uh, variant now, um, which I'm pretty sure is just about this. So what you would do with the speed light is on your camera, stick it up top. As you guys have known or seen me, uh, if you've seen me shoot before, you know that I always have some sort of speed light on top. So you stick this up here and then this allows you to change your direction. You can shoot straight on just like a normal pop-up flash or you can change your direction to bounce off of a wall. You can bounce off of ceilings that are above you if you have a nice bright white ceiling. If there's a white wall behind you and you want a nice large light source, you can even bounce this off of there. You know, just bouncing light is really great. Another cool thing about this Canon uh, 50, uh, 580 was that it has the ability to link to multiple lights. Let's say if I have this light and another light on a stand, you know, it can talk to each other uh, using Canon's proprietary technology. And also one last thing that we're gonna get into is it takes, it takes AA batteries, four of them. Yeah, I, I really love this. Uh, it was really great for the time that I had it. And like I said, I, I had multiple of these, but one of them actually broke on me. And for anyone that owns one of these Canon speed lights, you know that these things are not cheap. So when that first one broke on me, I was, I replaced it, but I was kind of crying deep down inside because I knew how much this thing costs. And then that got me looking into uh, alternatives to say this Canon flash, which brought me to our next setup. I went all in on Flashpoint or Godox, depending on where you are. This was like a fifth of the price of that Canon flash. And it gave me similar to equal, if not better results. Uh, so again, this one here takes four AA batteries. Great. Oh, another thing, uh, it has this function in it called TTL, same as the Canon, uh, but it, TTL in layman's terms, it just takes the settings that you have set on your camera and it uses that to 
determine the flash output, basically an auto mode for flashes. So that was great. Uh, it's still, you know, like I said, TTL, I can put it in a manual, I can control the flash there that way. I'm um, not gonna lie though, when I first got this thing, I was still kind of learning flash. And so it just stayed in TTL. I was, it's was the main thing that I needed. But another cool thing about this Flashpoint Zoom is that it has this R2 trigger in it or this R2 receiver and transmitter uh, system which is what really drew me to it. And I'm gonna talk more in depth about that in just a second. So yeah, not the same build quality, but I mean, it's sturdy enough. Like it's, it's gonna take a beating. Uh, and so after that, I knew that I wanted multiple. And because this was already a fifth of the price, I, I also knew that they had a cheaper version than this, uh, which is just a manual flash. So if you look at it, you know, the buttons on the back are a little different here. And that's because this one doesn't have TTL. Uh, so like I couldn't put this on top of my camera and it couldn't read the settings and set it to auto for me Like you have to manually put in your zoom and 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 uh, Your flash power on this bot on this flash here, which today I'm very capable of but back when I was still learning flash definitely not um, But I will say that this forced me to you know learn flash powers and such, you know, I could have this Like up on a light stand and like I said this has built they have built-in uh, transmitters and receivers in these things. So I could have this on my camera, right? And use this as a light, uh, as I had before, you know, bouncing and all the jazz while also having this on a stand somewhere else. And I could also control the power of this light. I can tell this to make this say half power, quarter power from a distance and still have light on my camera. Right? So I love this system. It was great. Now, the only downside that I had here was that it's double A battery, right? So with double A batteries, what happens is the flash will not go off until it has enough juice from those batteries in order to fire off at least another full power flash, whether you're on full power or not. So there were times when I was taking multiple shots, but then I would have to wait for this flash to repower or power back up. So some people, I, for a little while, there's uh, battery packs that you can buy that go on the side of these things and you can plug it in. Uh, that'll help the recycling times, what they would call it. But I found that Flashpoint, Godox or whatever, what have you, whatever you want to call it today, I'm going to call it Flashpoint because that's what I have. They made the exact same flash, but it uses lithium ion batteries. And this one's empty, so let me show you guys. Let me grab another one. Because I, I bought multiple. <laughs> I love these things. This uses a lithium ion battery, which, again, uh, not double A's. So you don't have to constantly go out and buy packs and packs and packs of double A batteries to back up. Uh, you don't have to go out and buy rechargeable double A batteries that die in like a year or, you know, like they will start losing their charge after a year or something like that. This lithium ion battery is like the truth uh, because unlike the AA batteries, it doesn't, it doesn't have to wait to draw power from batteries in order to pop off another flash. Like you can literally just hold this thing down and it'll keep firing and keep firing and keep firing and keep firing no matter what, except for in the event of it overheating. It can overheat and it will overheat. So while you can do it, doesn't mean that you should do it. I just love these flashes, absolutely love these flashes. And again, this R2, transmitter receiver signal thing greatness that they built that in so i can have multiple flashes up say one in every corner of a room and always have light you know going towards like the center of a room like a dance floor if one if need be and so these are my speed lights right oh you might also see me playing with this thing uh this is a mag mod um they quickly allow me to put on any type of lighting modifiers so so if I want to put a sphere on here and get some omnidirectional light, I can. You can still turn and twist and bounce this light any way, any which way you want, but you know, soften it up if you like. Uh, if you really need to throw some light in a good distance, they have this here. It's basically a glorified bounce card, but it's bigger. Um, it definitely like can fill a room, and you can definitely throw some light a good distance. And then they also have grids. You know, if you want to control the spread of light, so pop a grid on pop a grid on and then the cool thing about this is let's say I have a grid use my sphere it's interchangeable I can do that if you're an intermediate photographer uh, and you know about modifying light and you don't have mag mods what are you doing go get you some mag mods not sponsored whatsoever just love them there's also 
before I even step up, uh, the next level above is something that I don't have, but they're Flashpoint 8200s. And those are basically a speed light with that don't go on cameras. Like there's no hot shoe. It, picture just a battery and a flash and an ability to modify it, right? And those things I hear are great. I don't have them, but they're super portable, way more portable than what I'm about to tell you guys about, which are my mono lights or my strobes. Um, so I currently have two Explorer 600s, which are flashes. However, I am currently using both of them right now, using them on their modeling lamp to light me. And that is something that I would not recommend for long-term use, right? Because these lights are meant to pop flash. They are not meant to stay on for long periods of time. They will overheat. They will actually turn off if I don't finish this video in 15 minutes. And then I have to turn them back on because they are literally just modeling lamps. They're there to show you what your light might look like at a pop of flash. I'm not gonna, I could pick one up. I'll pick one up. This is a Flashpoint Explorer 600. Uh, Kind of beefy, uh, a little bit beefier than say like what they would call a Profoto B1. Just know that there are different types of mono lights um, that can get the job done. This one, I love it because it comes with like there's battery powered. I can plug one in like this, this other one over here is plugged in, uh, you know. And again, I can still trigger this using the same speed light that I had back there on my camera. I can control this power from my camera on there and still have a flash on my camera. I absolutely love it. Now, of course they do have, you know, dedicated triggers, but you know, I, I prefer the versatility of having a light source on my camera and a light that can control all the rest of the lights. So stick that back on. And so that's flash. And remember guys, when I told you in the beginning, there's three types of light. There's natural, there's flash, and then there's continuous. Continuous uh, artificial light is kind of like what you're seeing right now with my explorers shining on me because this is video, right? There's no pop of flash. So some benefits with that is what you see is what you get with continuous light. You know, you can really, really move it around to where you can fine tune uh, your highlights and your shadows with those lights uh, more so than you can with flash. With flash, it's kind of like take a picture, see what you did, and then tweak it from there. Whereas continuous light is like dial it in, dial it in, dial it in. All right, we're ready to shoot. Take a picture, move it, take the picture, move it, take the picture. You're good, right? You can just get a, a good workflow going, especially with products. So if it were me and I were giving my cousin this advice, I would say look for some sort of continuous light setup. I don't have any continuous light, so I can't recommend any. However, I know that I have seen a couple of people using uh, aperture uh, lights. I, I know that's the name of the company. Grab yourself some continuous light if you're gonna be doing any type of product or something like that. and. I would even say try and get continuous light if you're like me and you're going to be in the studio a lot. And I say that because with continuous light and portraiture, think about what the eye does when it's in a bright room versus in a dark room, right? When you're taking a shot of a portrait or when you're in a bright room, your pupils actually contract. They're kind of like the aperture of a camera. They contract and that gives more color and more uh, iris. Uh, in the eye. Whereas if you're using flash and you're in a dark setting, your pupil is going to adjust for the current setting, which would be uh, a darker room, which means that your pupil would open up, which means you would have a wider pupil and less color, right? So like, let's say I'm shooting a, a female with beautiful brown eyes. If I'm shooting her with flash, uh, more than likely I'm going to catch a huge pupil more so than her beautiful hazel eyes, right? So pros and cons to everything. I wish I had some more continuous light, but do I need it? Not really, because a lot of the things that I like to do are outside. And that's what the pros of a flash are, is that they're way more powerful than any continuous light that you're ever gonna get. You're gonna be able to overpower the sun with these lights. You can turn night into day. You can turn day into night with these lights. So to wrap it up, you have natural light, you have flash, and you have continuous artificial light. If you're gonna be shooting products or anything like that, or maybe even portraits, I would suggest that you get some continuous light. But if you're gonna be shooting outdoors or you're gonna be trying to shoot uh, fast motion and you wanna stop that motion, you don't really want any blur, then I would definitely suggest getting a flash. If you guys enjoyed those tips about lighting, let me know in the comments below. And let me know if you guys want to know about anything else photography related. Thanks guys for hanging out in the corner. I'm Cornerstone Captures. 
and I'll catch you next time. Peace.